Hey guys. Hey guys. One of um, Muscle Nerd's sayings is putting health back into the health and fitness industry. So we just want to discuss why that's important. So when we started Muscle Nerds, you noticed a need in the, in the industry for people to focus on training general population people and what would work best for them and we always started with like a health first approach mm. now unfortunately for us that's not sexy to talk about um it's not there's no way that we can kind of portray that in any type of images because like you've said in the past you can't put up some labs some lab work and say look at this before and after like look how no much it's not sexy person. enough for people so. so why have you been so adamant in sticking to your guns on always putting health first when it's an industry that's driven by image? Well, I mean, one thing is I've been in the industry a very long time and for two decades. So I've been through the performance aspect and I've seen how that doesn't really equate to training like your mom or your dad. <laughs> yeah. Like Susie, Susie. I just pictured my mom trying to... It doesn't, it doesn't, like, it doesn't help you with, right. you know, Susie Muffin Top, yeah. right? And when you go in, like the, the last company I worked for, it was mainly performance, mm -hmm. right? How do I train pro athletes and Olympic athletes and things like that, national level competitors and all that. But that stuff doesn't really work well without heavy modification for general population. And most people probably don't have the knowledge to know how to modify it Right. They don't know what to measure. They don't know how yeah. to assess things and they don't know how to dial things up, up or down. Right. Yeah. So that's the problem. Right. So if I, if I learn these crazy ways of bodybuilding or sprinting or high performance ath athletics, how do I, how do I change that for a 48 year old soccer mom? Mm. Right. Because the, the general population tend to be way overworked and overstressed and underslept and their nutrition is horrible and that type of stuff doesn't work well. So when I was still in the field training people one-on-one, -on -one, I had a lot of success with you know early 20s. But then when you look at people who were 35, 40, 45 and up, the methods didn't really work all that well unless that person had ample resources to make things like that work. And like as in to invest in recovery and Yeah, invest in recovery and the stuff that we call least mode and getting more sleep mm -hmm. and, you know, meal preparation. Mm -hmm. And and then like the psychology of things. Your your client's not going to kill themselves in the gym. Like Well that's it. I mean they're not doing it for their livelihood or for their career yeah. or, or to break a record of any kind. That's right. And, and for them, they're trying to get their health back. You know, training is, you have to have a lot of disposable income. Having a personal trainer, at least a really good personal trainer is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So you're basically people, people that need the most help right now are the people who have destroyed their health and now they're trying to get it back. So health doesn't really, it's not a really good selling point until someone's lost it. Which the majority, yeah, which is the majority of the people that we deal with have basically lost their health or they're on that direction. So if you have like medicine, you have preventive medicine, why can't we have preventive personal training where we're trying to get people back to health or prevent them from losing their health? And uh, it's, it's crazy because we started talking about this years ago. I was talking about this five or six years ago and we made that a center point of what we did and people thought we were crazy. And now people are starting to understand and you're seeing the industry moving that direction, which is good. The, a big, I, I suppose a big point that I just took up from that is, is training a general population person and training a athlete or a competitor of any kind, their motives are different. Like a yep. general population person just wants to feel better, look a little better, th their clothes not be so tight, feel a little bit more confident. And to do that, you need to focus on health to get them feeling better. Whereas a competitor, again, they have the, obviously have the luxury of recovery and, and having a team behind them that can help with that side of things for them. But they're going to sacrifice a lot more to get what they want as opposed to what a general population person is willing to sacrifice. Like they're not going to want to put in the hours in the work. They're not going to want to compromise feeling good to get yeah. a record that they're not going to Like at, at the end of the day, a lot of trainers, like trainers are incredibly weird, damaged people, right? All of us. So yeah. what drives us is different than what drives other people. I mean, you, you know the way I am. If I can't see my abs, I, I won't take my shirt off at the beach, mm -hmm. right? And that is completely dysfunctional. 
but that's not how the average person is. The average person just wants to feel better, take better shits. Mm -hmm. They want to sleep. People aren't sleeping. They want to eat a little more healthy. They don't want to do what it takes to get dick skin lean, and that's probably not what they want. When you have a lady that comes in to you and says, I just want to wear this size 12 pants that I wore in college again, what a lot of trainers will see is they'll look at her and they'll hear what she's saying. She says, I want to wear a one piece without feeling humiliated. Guys will say, I want to look down and see my, my feet again. <laughs> you know, that's vastly different than I want to be 3% body fat. And the problem is a lot of coaches, they, they hear what their clients are saying, but they're not listening to what they're saying. And so if you come to me or come to a, a, a average trainer, if you go to a regular trainer and you say, I want to, you know, I want to wear a one piece. In that trainer's mind, he's already envisioning that client standing on stage in a two-piece at a bodybuilding show. And that is not what your clients want. Mm -hmm. And then you end up giving them protocols that are unrealistic, mm -hmm. don't fit in with their life when you have kids and you're working 60 hours a week and you've got a mortgage and you've got two cars and you've got all this other shit going on. You still want to have a social life. So we decided to start teaching how do I train normal people? Yeah. You know, how, how do I make those assessments? Because if somebody's super stressed out, the last thing you want to do is put them into some unrealistic protocol because all they're going to do is self-sabotage and binge the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a very rare person that's gen pop that actually wants to do a radical transformation. That's cool. There's plenty of companies that do that and there's plenty of people that teach that. We teach that too, but we teach that after you learn how to get people healthy first. Get them healthy first, then go into the transformation. That way the transformation is sustainable. Yeah. Because if you do a radical transformation, the methods that people are using are only sustainable when the person has enough motivation to do it and has somebody screaming at them, right? You have to create an environment and a structure of training and eating and supplementation where the tr they, they can do that same stuff after the transformation because the more extreme you get, the less likely they're gonna be able to do it after it and that's when people blow up and you see people going through three, four, five transformations yeah. in a row. Like every year they're doing a transformation because you haven't set them up with a sustainable, A, you haven't set them up with an exit plan or a sustainable way of staying lean. And what I've noticed, because we typically get a lot of people that come to us at the end point. So when they've done everything like that and they're messed up and they're sick of going through transformations all again. And one of the things I've noticed with a lot of our clients is they think that that's what worked in the past. So yeah. that's what they need to do. But if it had worked, they wouldn't be needing to do it That's again. Right. If you can't sustain it, it's not a good transformation. If you're continuously going back to the same trainer or the same company over and over and over mm -hmm. to repeat this process of basically dysfunctional training, dysfunctional eating, dysfunctional uh, supplementation, mm -hmm. and then you blow back up because it's not sustainable, it's not a good transformation at all. And there's better ways of doing things. So by focusing on health, we improve the quality of the person's life, which is ultimately what they're going to want, whether they're aware of it at the start or not. Um, and we teach that personal trainers need to, what a client does outside of the gym reflects what should be done inside of the gym. So if they have a super stressful lifestyle, the last thing you want to do is make them stress inside the gym because that's not going to transition into their outside of the gym lifestyle very well. It's not going to help them. So if you work on the health markers and you work on their stress markers and all that sort of stuff, it's going to have a more positive effect in the outside of the gym's life. At the end of the day, our, our clients are already beasting their lives as is. Mm. There's no reason to beast them then in the gym. The whole point of lifting weights is to build stress resilience, mm. right? Build lean body mass, they have better metabolisms. Use it as something that gives them more stress resilience, which will then translate outside of the gym but if we're pushing them past the point of what they can actually do and recover from and past the point of what they can do by themselves, we're driving them further and further in that sympathetic pathway and it gets harder and harder to pull them back out. Mm -hmm. Then you teach them dysfunctional ways of doing things so that when you tell them, okay, it's time to put the brakes on, we need to eat a little bit more, you need to get more sleep, you don't need to train six times a week, then they think that that's the only way to do it, and it's not. Because that's it, what's worked right. for them in the past. And it's hard, it's hard on me <laughs> when I have to convince a client that they're doing way too much and it's completely unnecessary to, to do drop sets and huge giant sets and to do 
you know, crazy hit training on an air dine all the time, eating 1200 calories. Like this is not a good sustainable way of doing things. And it's counterintuitive to what they think. And again, it's that whole extreme nature is if this works more, we'll work better. Right. If, if this amount of work gets me results, if I do more, I'll get more results. Or if I'm in this much of a caloric deficit and that makes me lose this much fat, if I eat less, I'll lose more. Well, if but it there's was, always a point of no If return. it was such a good way of doing it, why do you keep blowing up? Mm. Why do you keep having mental breakdowns? Why do you keep binging? Why can't you sleep? Why can't you poop correctly? Why is your thyroid messed up? Mm. Why are you const in constant pain? Why do you have DOMS 24 hours a day? Half of them, the sad thing is half of them probably don't even realize that they actually feel like shit. Yeah. Well, you typically don't understand until you actually feel good, good. again. You have a comparison. So we work on people's health because once they're healthy, the physical transformation kind of almost takes care of itself. Like it's, obviously there's a little bit of work. It's a lot path, easier to get a transformation with a lot, doing a lot less if you get healthy first, mm -hmm. which doesn't take that long. In our, in, in our experience, maybe six to eight weeks, we can get somebody where they're really in a good position, then you move into the specific work, which is, you know, fat loss or hypertrophy or strength or power or whatever they want. Mm -hmm.